Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Rule Series Week 10. We're into the Grand Finals. Thomas and Pudas, who have been upsetting this entire tournament, knocking out all the top-seeded players, except for Randy and Randy's fan, who they are now facing in this Grand Finals, and who have fought their way out through the loser's bracket. I mean, they were knocked out really early on by Crone and Ear, got their revenge in Acklin Wastelands, and now are looking to take the tournament, but they are going to have to win two whole best of threes to do it, while Thomas and Pudis just need to win two rounds. And the tournament will be theirs. And I'm not <clears throat> currently trying to figure out who's banning, because, I mean, Randy and their fan coming from the loser's bracket. So it would kind of make sense, but at the same time, Thomas and Pudis do have a lower elo, I guess. Or lower seed, rather. They have the lowest... They have, they're seed 7 out of 8. Again, they... are Actually, out of 9, technically. There was... There has... There is, in fact, a section before. But... That's just... That was handled by DQs. So, it wasn't really relevant. But yeah, out of the 8 teams that were actually playing, they were seed 7. And... They have really done, like, they've done far, far better than their seed would suggest. So, yeah, it is going to be Thomas and Pudis getting that first ban going. I'm not sure what they're going to want. Because they have made Ackland Wastelands work, but I don't know if they want to go for that again. I mean, against the stronger players, they have been typically going for Sapphire Shores or Vantage. They might go for Random Crags as well. Although they banned it out last time. Oh yeah, they might. They would ban it last time. Thomas would be too afraid of an even match. But the first thing they banned out is Vantage. They don't want to have to deal with Vantage. I guess they don't want to deal with the possibility of Randy basically pulling the same trick on them. Again, I expect Sapphire Shores will be likely the map played on. Sparkles Reef is out as well, thanks to Randy. Zed will probably be banned. Although, admittedly, no. Pudis, Pudis and Thomas get the pick, so there's no reason that they would want to ban anything if they don't... They're not worried about it being picked under their feet. Probably more a matter of just getting... getting the idea into Randy's heads that... or Randy and the fans' head. want to get around in their friends' heads, like, what they're thinking of doing. Without banning out too many maps that allow Randy and their fan to take out all the options for, you know, skill player sniping. Which is probably what they're going to do. I mean, that's that's how they got rid of Anir. That's how they got rid of Dimefreund. That's not how they got rid of Steel Blue and Tempic Fred, though. That was a slower, grindy game. They just managed to play it out better. Because remember, Steel Blue and Tempic Fred were, were second seed. But yeah, Buddhist and Thomas are going to be... What are they going to want? Okay, Buddhist banning Crags. Akalon is out as well. So that leaves Zed, Sapphire Shores, and Lonely Oasis. I would be very surprised if Zed was picked. The other two would make sense. But Zed would really stuff any opportunities to just crush the strong player. Like, Randy's fan would just be able to provide additional fire support for Randy as they just set up. And Thomas and Pudis wouldn't have a lot of room. But no, they go for it! That's exactly what they go for! Okay, they got something, they have something in mind that I'm not thinking of. They are... They have a plan. They must have a plan. Oh, for their sake, they have a plan. But, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Like I said, I, the, the way they've been playing thus far, I don't see how Zed plays into their strategy. Except for the fact that it is a map that Randy and their fan don't like. Like, Randy has been consistently banning that map in other games. Like we saw against Winslow on Madman, they banned it. Against Corona Nier, they obviously banned it because Corona Nier beat them on it. That might just be the thinking. Uh, Thomas and Pudis are thinking, you know what? They don't like it. 
Might as well play on it. I mean, they we might not have the best opportunity to go for like strong player snipe, but they also don't like the map. And it looks like Randy and their fan already trying to work out. I was sort of working on basic strategy and how to approach some of the stuff, which is understandable. Alright, well. That is. Well, but Thomas and Pudis, yeah, they got. <laughs> Need something to fight Spider. Yeah, they don't. I don't think going for Cloaky Rover or anything like that is going to be the best way to go. It's an understandable approach, but yeah, like Glaives can't really fight Venoms. Although there's not going to be any Venoms coming in from Randy or their fan. Thomas might go for Jump Bots. Pudis not. Interesting, okay. I don't know what they're planning then. But Randy and their fan, they got Anthbots and Rovers. Pudis and Thomas with... <laughs> okay, with a misclick. Okay, Pudis going for Spiders. Yeah, I could maybe see them going for something a little tricky. Boot is going for early fleas. Thomas, what are you... Maybe they're not going for jump bots. I don't know. There's curious what they're planning on going for. I guess they figure that they can just have their teammate handle some of the frontline scouting. Going for rovers, though? I, okay, interesting. I thought maybe they were going to try to do something where they let the fleas see what's going on, and then, based on what the fleas see, pick a factory. Which would be a good idea. But no, I went for rovers. Which is fine. I mean, rover, amph versus rover, spider. It's not going to be the worst thing in the world. At any rate, though, it's going to be tricky, because there's not a whole lot that either of these factories have for holding the center. Like, Anthbot has bulkheads, and Anthbot has boys. Like, the center... Randy's fans are going to have no problem holding the center with the unit composition. Ravagers and Rippers can kind of hold the center. And Spider, I mean, I guess you do have... You have Recluse and Crab later on. But early game, it's going to be tough. And also, this is best of three. It's worth pointing out, Grand Finals is best of three, not best of one. And not only is it best of three, should Randy and their fan win, should Pro Team win... There'll be another best of three, because that's how double elimination works. It's just the basically the the winner side team's not out of the to the losers bracket effectively, but it's still grand finals, so then it's then it's even. But yeah, right now Right now the Northeast team is on the winner's bracket side, so they only need to win one series. And they're also being sneaky because that's what they do, although it's been spotted. Fleas can't quite do easy harassment, but they should be able to get this Mason. Pudis again being tricksy as always. Which is why I don't know why they picked this map. I'm honestly confused. Because this is not a map to be tricksy on. This is a map to be straightforwardly just smashing your opponent with a bunch of artillery in the center of the map on. So I'm really confused as to why they approached this the way they did. Like, I honestly don't really know. But, it might work out. Actually, this... Okay, this is interesting. I think this course is going to be able to do too much, but that was a... That was a... That was an attempt. I mean, they tried. There was way too much in the way of defenses. The defenses just provided way too much fire, fire support, but... I mean... They tried, I guess. I mean, again, it's not like... No, Thomas and Buddhas have... They have room. If they... they and it looks like they're going to throw in the towel here, but... They have room, of course, if they... Yeah, this is best of three, so they can win... They can lose one and then win two. 
And then also, they have another series they can work with, so it's not like... They don't have to... Like, Pudis and Thomas can play risky. They can go for silly strategies. They can try stuff that might not work. Like, high-risk, high-reward things, like trying to snap out a commander in the front lines with a bunch of Scorchers. They can do that. It's no big deal. It's totally in their power. It's a little... Obviously, the more they do that, the closer they get to not being able to, to pull off such risks. But in this first match, now they can totally do that. Might even be why they picked Zed, honestly. They thought, well, maybe we can do some stuff with Zed. Make it work. I mean, Randy and Crow are... Or sorry, Randy and Crow, they're not playing together. Randy and their fan are not going to be really wanting to play on Zed. So maybe we can make them uncomfortable. Maybe that'll work. But it's still looking iffy. I mean, Buddha still has the fleas in the back line, still doing some damage. And these Hermits I'm not so confident in. But at the same time, I mean, Northeast and Pro, their economies are basically even. I mean, if you re a few Scorches were lost, sure. How much Reclaim is left, though? They kept being run over. So Scorches were lost. They weren't really turning to Reclaim. Randy's fan is starting to take this, though. Pushing pretty hard. She's pushing pretty hard over here, too. So this, still, this is still looking very bad. Like Northeast team, they are economically okay, but positionally are doing a horrible, are having a horrible time. I shouldn't say doing a horrible job. They're doing fine, but they're, they're not having a good day. This is not their match. I don't know why they picked Zed. Again, I really don't know. Yeah, the one saving grace is this this metal extractor is probably fine. What the heck is this? Huh. Some decoration apparently get caught in the terraform. Oh yeah, so it's the decoration on the side of the metal extractor. Doi. But yeah, that's unfortunate. Now losing the front line, that's gonna leave Randy open to just come in. I mean it's a thing. The ducks. Ducks are basically just being a distraction. I mean, that's the problem, is that Boots' commander can't really go forward. Randy's commander's all healed up again. Pudis is... I mean, they're going pretty okay in the mid-game, but yeah, again, this just isn't... This isn't the way you want to play spiders in this map. I think it's slam missiles? Yeah, they did. A slam rocket. Not a bad choice, actually, against all these... All these fencers. That's actually really smart. Randy's commander also looking to be going down. There is there is no saving it. Randy's commander ultimately does go down, taking a bunch of its own scorches with it, while most of Northeast's force is still alive. And for that matter, that means the hermits are actually managing to push quite a bit back, but the bulkheads should be able to stop them. Or maybe not. No, there's just too many of them. Northeast team, they just don't care. They really don't care, and Pudis and the Slam Rocket also really doesn't care. I mean, these ducks. Yeah, no. Machine Gun Slam Rocket, that's that is a great combo. Fortunately, the Hermits are starting to go down. Fortunately, all of that is more or less within Northeast territory. But no, Pro throws in the tail. That's... That is it. So, yeah. Uh, it's the first, first round goes... To, or, yeah, first game goes to Pro. On Zed. Managed to redeem themselves on Zed. Bit of a shame, though. I mean, it didn't totally work out, but... It wasn't the worst. Anyway. That was weird. I don't understand why they went for what they went for, but they did. So, yeah. We're gonna be moving on to... No, not that one. No, 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 no. Keep making that mistake. I gotta change I, I have it hockeyed. Anyway, let's... Get back to this. Except more professional. Oh, couldn't secure the reclaim. That's why Pudis quit. Pudis quit. Yeah, if they got to grab the reclaim they made from that one fight, that would make sense. But all the ducks behind with the fencers in front and losing a bunch of hermits trying to get it back. Yeah, that makes sense. Might still have been a little too soon. But... 
Oh. Looks like we're gonna have a short, short break for Randy's fan. Yeah, I don't. That was weird. I mean, uh, people are pointing out that the that the commander, or is that the commander? The the fencer isn't really best countered. Until a defensor isn't really best countered in, with the hermits. It's not bad, but yeah, it's usually flea or recluse or something. If you have enough fleas, other oh, flea is kind of iffy. Reckless is okay. Venom might work, maybe, but eh, I don't think so. I think you'd run out of venoms by the time you got to them. They're kind of designed to counter them. Kind of. It, it's, it's iffy. For cost, though, I wouldn't rely on it. Reckless is probably the way to go, honestly. I mean, fences have to stop the fire. At any rate, with that all set up, I don't know. At any rate, we are still... Again, we're waiting on a short break for Randy's fan. I just don't really want to have to deal with editing more than I have to. Just trying to think of anything else I can talk about in the meantime while we're waiting for Randy's fan to get back. So for the record, this does mean that in... That Randy's Randy and their fan cannot pick Zed this game, this next round. Because they are going to get the map pick. They cannot pick Zed. So Zed is basically auto-banned because they do they get the pick. Which means that four other maps can be banned. And that, well, admittedly, they could just choose to ban Zed and thus open up another one of the maps for themselves. That is kind of how it would work. Because if they don't do that, they only get picks between two. If they do that, they get picks between three. But Poots and Thomas... Oh, no, no, sorry, no, Poots and Thomas get the pick. My bad. Poots and Thomas get the pick. If Randy and... Randy and their fan lose round two, they, they can't pick Zed. That's what it is. And if they win round two, then it's the bracket recess. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, we can at least get some stuff. The ban... First ban, Ackland Wastelands from Randy. Wait, why is Randy banning? Oh, people are asking about the mod tournament. So there, there is going to be a tournament featuring a variety of different mods that will be happening on the 21st. I'm not sure the exact time. I think it's around the same time. But give or take an hour because daylight savings time happens tomorrow and it's going to be weird. I'm not 100% sure what the time is going to end up being. Let's see. What is the actual time set to... Okay, that's going to be early in the morning. My bad. Sorry. So the, it's 12, that's not one for Europe. That's I think the person doing this doesn't know how time zones work. But anyway, the, I don't know what time it is. Actually, it says Noon UTC, but judging by the time conversions, I have no idea. It would be 5 a.m. for me. But I don't know, because I don't know if they mean midnight 
or if they mean noon. There's conflicting stuff there. I think that's meant to be put in PM instead of AM in some cases. It's probably going to be noon GMT or 5 AM. Not this, not tomorrow, but the following week. So that is going to be the modded tournament. It's going Swiss. Every round is a different mod. And there's details linked in the chat for it. And I won't remember to put it into the description. I am sorry. Oh, wait. It's... Oh, winner of previous man's first time. Oh, my bad. Okay. Well, loser still picks. Seriously? I... Oh, winner of previous game. Okay. But yeah, loser still picks. So with that, wow, but it does not have advantage. Okay, we are so advantage. Jack and Sparkles have been banned. Anyway, one more ban remains. Not sure what it's going to be. But yeah, so the modded tournament is... Like, it's Swiss. Every round is a different mod. And with the exception of one of the rounds, there's all the same maps. One of the rounds is arena mod, which requires FFA maps. But everything else is 1v1, which is mod each round. So you have zero wars, you have level ups, you have future wars near the end. It's It should be really interesting. Most of them, however, are... Pre like, zero wars... Arena mod are very... Well, Arena mod is very different. Zero Wars, I think, is very different. I have to double-check that one. Unit level ups and more units is pretty similar. Unit level ups is just a little awkward because basically as your units get kills, they grow big, but then spawn a bunch of little drone versions of themselves. And then also have this upgrade tree they can work with to get weird perks. Future Wars and, and more units is just more units. So both unit level ups and more units is kind of vanilla plus plus. Future Wars is a total rebalance mod. And Arena Mod, we've seen before, is essentially you pick from a big list of unit types that you shuffle through, and then you just build them. But you don't have to build anything else for it. So there's a variety of... A variety from vanilla with a few extra units or an extra mechanic to total rebalance to completely different style of game just using the same units as vanilla. So it'd be pretty cool. Anyway, we're on Lonely Oasis. So, it's worth noting, Randy and their fan need to win only one more round to reset the bracket and be in a position to potentially take the entire tournament, really. While Pudis and Thomas need to win two more rounds, or need to win both these rounds in order to win the tournament and succeed at knocking out every single top four seed. So far, they have all but one. Anyway, we're on Lonely Oasis. We are getting started. And I'm really not sure what they're going to go for. This is not a terrible map for going for, like, a better player snipe. Unlike Zed. Zed is a horrid map for doing a better player snipe. But, no, this is okay. This is fine. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. But with... That being said, I mean, Lonely Oasis is still a little bit of a weird map, to be honest. I mean, it's one of those maps where there is a lot of defensibility. There's only, like, this ramp and this ramp. Unless you have spiders, then this stuff becomes accessible. So, it depends if we're going to see a spider plop, which we probably will. Also, Tom's going... Wow! 
Thomas going very forward. What are they doing? Like, proxy spider or something? Oh, proxy hover. Ooh. Okay. Not sure how that's going to work out. I guess it kind of makes sense, though, because you have a lot of the sea you can go around, so it's a little hard to get up. But, yeah, well-played Proxy Hover would be able to basically go in and out from the sea and really make holding the low ground hard. Buddhists, on the other hand, going for spiders. Well, not surprising at all. And we are ready to go. Randy's fan. Are they going to do the same thing? Well, certainly setting up in the same place. Jump bots are what Randy wants to play. Randy's fan, oh, they plop spiders at the top. So jump spider versus spider hover. Early bolas. So I'm looking at it. It could be a rush. It could be a slow game. Probably going to be a slower game. Probably not going to be an attempted calm kill rush. But then again, those bolas is pretty good. But I don't know, because it's just... Actually, I guess this is one thing that really benefits from Hovercraft. It's these titles, they're pretty... They're vulnerable. I mean, there's not much that you can do to defend them from there. I don't think it's going to happen, though, because the bolses are going to be useful up front. I mean, Spider Factory, until it starts getting some like decent amount of Venoms, doesn't have much in the way of defense. And already, Randy's fan is pushing quite a bit with their own fleas. So, Thomas coming in. Should be able to... At least get some information. Oh, got it. Actually, quite a bit. Put a puppy on notice, but... A lot of this base in a really vulnerable position without much to defend it. And able to defend against these fleas coming around the back. Well, not really. The fleas going to go over here and be a problem. And they already are, actually. But more fleas coming in the side. I mean, there's two spider players, one on each team, so it's not the worst thing in the world. At any rate, Randy is still in a pretty okay position-ish, but uh, starting to fall. Starting to falter. That was some strong economic rating early on. That was, what, two down the... The Constructor's still alive, but it's not doing anything, so it's not alive for much purpose right now. Is that Pyro going to go down? Is that Bull's going to take out a Pyro? That... That Bull's is going to take out a Pyro. Sheesh. That is value. That Bull's has paid for itself on top of the fact that it's taken out a bunch of economy. Granted, this moderator is going to end its day, but... You know, it, it, it had a good run. That run has now ended. That was a run. Actually, that might be what Northeast needs, because now they're 10 metal per second ahead. They've got a solid economic lead. Randy's commander is quite far forward. And we've seen before, the way Thomas and Pudis play is they try to get a decent economic advantage. They try to bait out their opponent's commander to being a little too risky. And then they start... Either taking out the opponent from behind or crushing the commander directly. So, this is definitely playing towards that. But Randy's commander doesn't seem to be phased. It's holding on, sticking to that territory. Mace is trying to say, no, go away, or you will die. At the very least, your entire defensive structure will fall apart. At the same time, Flea's coming around the side. Uh, finding a lot, actually. There's nothing defending the top side. It wouldn't be able to kill much beyond wind gens, but that's still something. They gotta be careful, because fleas die to wind gens. Ooh, yeah, that's two down. That's two down. Gotta fight move that. Okay, well, that's... That's the fleas dead again. One more. That's the dead flea. Well, got a bit out at the same time. Thomas's commander forced back a bit. The mace... Mace forced back a bit. Not dead, though. Just killed some things. So Thomas is still in an okay position. Take a few free pyros as well. And more fleas? Okay, those fleas aren't doing much, but that's still that's all it needs. The distraction coming to allow the bolus to take out everything at the bottom here. 
Oh, but the Venom's able to get revenge. Not really worth it. I mean, took out a couple metal extractors, which is good. But also left a bunch of reclaim, which is not. And also these forces are way out in the front. Venom, at this point, you can't fight it. You can't fight it with Bolas. Scalpels will work. Mace might work. Bolas will not. And despite the best efforts, it looks like Thomas and Buddhas aren't really able to put a real dent into Randy's forces. And Randy's fan doing doing a solid job holding their holding their own. They have the Venom Ball. They have enough defenses to keep their commander relatively safe. Randy can start really playing around this map. Of course, that kind of depends on how well these Venoms work. Bolus again. Oh, okay, Bolus is not going to be quite so able to take this out. Dagger support comes in. It's not quite enough. But the Venom's able to take out another Pyro. So it's it's attrition, but it's attrition that's still going in favor of the Northeast team. Quite significantly, actually. It's a thousand metal-ish. As Northeast also maintains an economic advantage, which Pro is finally catching up to. So Northeast, they have the attrition, they have the metal, they have the armor value as a result. They just need to keep playing this smart. Like, don't throw units away, don't make silly engagements. Just be careful how you approach things. Although, uh, in this case, it might be too much. Randy Span picking a very strong time and a very solid position to attack from. That Weaver is done. That was a lot. Of Whoa, what the? I say that as it turns out that Pudis got a standard classic D-gun and no one told anyone. And Cloak. Okay, Pudis has been building a, an ultimatum out of their commander this entire time. Did not see that coming. Neither did Randy's number one fan as their commander now lies in rubble. Complete wreck. Not even proper standard wreck. They're, they are completely mangled on top of that. That was... That was a play. That was a play I honestly should have come to expect from these two by now because that is how they've been playing. Build it slow, build it steady, and then come out with a massive socking swerve that completely wipes out one of your opponents, or at least massively curtails their ability to expand, and eventually their ability to build a force. And then once you turn into a 2v1, sweep the other opponent and win. So this is looking good for Thomas and Pudis. They started out strong, they're continuing strong, they just need to end it off strong. So far so good though, I mean they're still way ahead in attrition. They're... This halberd is actually doing a really good job of just setting things up. Unfortunately, the moderator is not quite enough. Dagger's also coming in, burning some of that attrition. It's not a whole lot. There's still 2,000 metal. There's a lot of room to spare there. You gotta be careful. But yeah, Randy's fan, though, unfortunately, just don't have, they don't have a lot to support with. Their commander's gone. Worry about a cloaked commander killing everything. On top of all the additional forces coming in to clean up. I mean, Randy's Pyros here are going to be the main asset, keeping the game potentially winnable for Pro. It's just not looking like it's going to be all that effective. The Redbacks are in place. The Venoms can easily come in. More Halberds are up to. Randy's Commander... They're doing okay for now. Pudis is on the way to make sure that's no longer the case very shortly. Same time, though, Pudis' force is coming over the cliff. A little bit of knocker position, unable to save their own Venoms. One is left, but that's about it. Pudis' commander playing it safe. Randy's commander completely unupgraded. At the same time, Pudis going with the distraction force. Halberds around the back, taking forever to take out, which opens things up if Pudis' commander could just wipe out Randy's. It's close. It's close. It's... It's not happening yet. Okay, there it goes. There it is! And... Where's the shot? Where is the shot? Pudis? There's the shot! Randy's commander goes down, opening up this entire section to be taken out. That's exactly what the rest of Thomas's forces are going to do. Fortunately, Pudis's forces are forced to cede the northwest, but they'll be fine. Randy's commander is down. Randy's front line is falling. The maces are falling. The halberds are doing a great job just keeping them, keeping those moderators busy. Unfortunately, the maces can't do much more than that. 
They are down. Oh, and Thomas... What? Oh, dear. Thomas losing all confidence that they can actually win this. I mean, they did lose a lot of territory. And Putus invested a lot into that commander, and unfortunately that is... Oh, shoot, I totally missed that. The Redbacks around the back completely wiping out Putus's force. Or sorry, not the Redbacks, they saved them. Pyro's around the back wiping out Putus's force. Yeah, Thomas might have a point here. Now, that was a strong frontline kill, but unfortunately, the back line was taken out. And that might be Northeast. Maybe Thomas and Putus going to a bracket reset. Thomas trying. They have... The f they have... Oh, they missed! They missed the Firewalker! The one shot they had again, you're in it. Not, I don't know if it was the biggest deal, but... Oh, that is painful. That has got to hurt. Well. Thomas is still out. Putus has maybe a chance of pulling this out. It's, it's a tough... It's, it's tough. I don't know. They, they, I think they're just gonna. I think they're thinking about what they're gonna do for going forward because it's bracket reset. It's not over yet. I don't know if Thomas and Thomas may not realize that there's a back, bracket reset. Well, at any rate, hopefully that communicates it, because, I mean, yeah, Pudis did lose a lot in the back line, that's huge. But I don't think Thomas needed to, like, quit out. I could see that making sense if, if this was it. But, like, there's still potentially two more, there's at least two more rounds after this, assuming Thomas and Pudis decide to play and don't just surrender completely. But they might seed it. They might say, oh, you know what, forget it, it's over, there's no way we're just gonna... We're not going to go for the bracket reset, we're just going to call it. They might do that. I don't know. But, as it stands, I could kind of understand if they did. But yeah, Thomas might just be too tired. They might they might have decided, you know what, I'm done. We got, we got second place, that's great. I'm cool with that. I don't really want to play this fight anymore. Because it does feel like Pudis is something of the the leader of this team, or the stronger player in this team. Thomas is more the support player. But yeah, Pudis now running 1v2. This is... This is not looking good. Pro is able to get a bunch of reclaim. They're able to get the army value back up. It's... Putus is definitely trying to come back from this. They've managed to rebuild a bunch of the metal extractors and they have a fair amount of reclaim to work with. You know, and I had a reclaim over there and more elsewhere, but it's just not it's just not solid. There's no real solid army. If Pro goes for any concerted push anywhere, it's done. Not to mention the Pyro is constantly just messing up everything Putus is trying to build. Like, it's kind of sad, but unfortunately, their strategy just didn't really pan out. Randy's number one fan turned out to be far more resilient than expected and was able to push back the follow-up assault to losing their commander. And of course, Randy's, Randy himself, they had enough defenses and enough units in the front lines that that assault didn't really pan out, not to mention the back line completely wrecked everything. So right now, now Pudis throws in the towel, and that is going to be bracket reset. So, they are... two zero, and we're into bracket reset for this tournament. 